Well, hi, Rachel. Hello. How are you today? Oh, doing great. So excited to chat with you. I am so excited too. Um, so Rachel, tell us about you. Sure. You know, it's kind of funny because since we're talking about imposter syndrome, that makes this question really difficult to <laughs> answer. Mm-hmm. Um, well, so uh, I'm Rachel Arpin. I am an instructional designer currently, learning and development consultant. I've been in the l and world for 13 years. Uh, I recently earned my Doctor of Education in Organizational Leadership. Um, I studied the use of escape room games to deliver leadership training. So that was a lot of fun. Um, and yeah, I currently work at the Ohio State University at the James. I'm non-clinical. I I could not do what clinical folks do. I admire them so much. So I create like the staff training videos and the, Mm -hmm. the online learning opportunities. Um, yeah, it's kind of one of those things where like, I'm a jack of all trades, master of none. So like the, the fact that we're talking about this topic today is going to be one of those. Yeah, I know this much about that, and feel completely <laughs> like, mm-hmm. like I don't know anything about going deeper in it. So, but yeah, okay. Hi, hi, <laughs> <laughs> welcome. Um, so, what would you say are your biggest? Th- bleh, bleh. Let me try that again. What would you say are your biggest accomplishments in life, in work? Just what are your biggest accomplishments? Sure. I think the most like tangible, practical one is that I completed school. You know, that was a four year investment and a very challenging journey. So getting to the end of that um, and being Dr. Rachel Arpin now, I'd say that's probably one of my greatest, biggest accomplishments. And, you know, just kind of bigger picture, taking a step back, like life has thrown me quite a few curveballs throughout the years. And so being able to say, okay, I've been knocked off a path. I'm going to pave a new path. Um, I'd say from that bigger picture, that's probably one of my bigger accomplishments as well. (laughs) Yeah. So I'm going to take that question and kind of ask it in a different way. What, what would others say about you? What what would they say are your biggest accomplishments? So it's funny because just the first question, what would they say about you? They'd say, Rachel, do you ever stop? Mm -hmm. (laughs) You're always doing stuff. Um, But probably from a greatest accomplishment, they would also say that I finished school, you know, such a small percentage of people go for what I did. But um, it was also the reason that I told people I couldn't do things. So I had to say no to a lot um, with that being my excuse. Mm -hmm. So I think that's that's just kind of on the the minds of other people. But um, I think they would also say just from an accomplishment standpoint, you know, I, I don't slow down, you know. I jump straight from one thing to the next. You know, I don't want to sit long enough for imposter mm-hmm. syndrome to prevent me from doing anything. Sure, so I got to sure. keep moving. Um, but yeah. So what has been your experience with imposter syndrome? Sure. So, well, so when I think about it, you know, imposter syndrome, it's this, um, like this feeling that, that uh, you know, this hauntingness of like, I'm not good enough. I'm not going to live up. They're going to find me out that I'm not what they think I am. And uh, for me, I like to kind of visualize things. And so I, I've i anthropomorphized imposter syndrome into a little imposter monster. Um, I would love to draw it and like have a, but it's kind of like reminds me of the Mucinex guy, but adorable because oh. I have to deal with it on a daily yeah. basis. Yeah. He is gross. So I'm glad that you made him adorable. <laughs> Yeah, you know, like the big eyes or whatever. But it's one of those things where, for me, knowing that there's this, and I'll probably say a bunch of times, this imposter monster, like kind of looking over my shoulder, trying to constantly tell me, eh, you sure? Mm -hmm. You're you're probably not good enough to do that. Or someone else has already done it. Why even bother? Um, And so, you know, it's this collection of experiences and beliefs and things over, over the years. And I can even think of, um, you know, one of the very first times that I ever experienced it, it was actually someone telling me that in a way that I was an imposter and that kind of created this, I think that's where the imposter monster was born. So I remember being in high school and my senior year, I was the drum major for Mm. our marching band. And in, I grew up in Connecticut. So our drum majors were kind of more like field commanders, metronomes. They did the conducting not so much the like baton 
and mace twirling that we see in the Midwest area. Um, and for years, I had been leading up to this moment, right? Attending leadership camps and doing all the band geeky things. Um, and so when my senior year, when I was chosen as drum major, I sent an email to the directors. I was like, I'm so excited. Thank you so much for this opportunity. I've gone to leadership band camp for three years. I've got ideas, right? You know, from <laughs> any right. of us that have had someone send us that email, we kind of know how it feels to receive one of those emails. But um, for me, I was just so excited and young. And then I got pulled into the director's office and three of the directors were in there and like, we were offended, by your email. Oh, that's and not what you were trying to do. Not at all. And basically in that moment, it kind of was like, you know, slow your roll. And and that's where I think the imposter monster started showing up and saying, see, you know, y y you're not good enough. Like you got this and that's fine and all, but you don't really cut it. They don't like your ideas. You mm -hmm. should just stay quiet. Um. And so from that, it's, it's kind of funny that I, like, I can still picture that moment. I can still picture the people in the room, how I felt. Like, it's one of those moments that sticks with you yeah, and defines you. Um, and I, so I'd say, like, that's kind of where it all started for me. And um, since then, it's kind of been a, this collection of experiences of trying to, you know, okay, do they value what you're going to say? Mm -hmm. Should you say something? That kind of thing. So, so was that your, would you say that's your first experience with imposter syndrome? The first time you? That's the first time that I can remember. I mean, I'm sure like because of that moment standing out so much, I sure. could reflect even further back. I mean, we all have our childhood things that we can't let go. Yep. <laughs> um, yep. But I'd say that's the one where I was in a position of what I thought was leadership and excited about it and kind of got knocked down a level and it kind of fed that imposter yeah. monster. It's really unfortunate that uh, that they didn't see your email as enthusiasm. I mean, really, they thought that you were trying to be like, you don't know what you're talking about. I'm better. Really? I mean, really? <laughs> well, you know, so what's interesting for me is like looking back on that, I, there's not like we were both right in our feelings. I was excited. They were offended. Those feelings were valid, right? We felt what we felt. And but. We also aren't to blame. I was excited and they were the leaders looking at this inexperienced 17 year old saying, oh, uh -huh. she's got a lot to learn, right? I did have a lot to learn and I can be vocal <laughs> sometimes. Like I, I was the, I was the Hermione, right? Like, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So I understand. Uh -huh. um, so it was kind of one of those things where even looking back, I can justify it. I can think through it logically, but it still stands there as that memory that says, hmm, you sure you mm. want to say something? Mm -hmm. Yes, I understand. <laughs> so do you, do you still struggle with imposter syndrome? You still have oh, yeah. moments or episodes, I guess is what you could call them. Yes, absolutely. Like on a regular basis. In fact, I would, I don't know if this is going to be silly or not to share this, but this project has been an exercise in imposter syndrome as well. I don't know if any of your other folks have said that because, you know, I've listened to a couple of the videos, but like I think back to when you posted on LinkedIn, I'm like, hey, I'm doing this project. It's about imposter syndrome. Who would like to talk about it? And it's like, well, why would anyone care what I have to say about that? Mm -hmm. The monster pops out and goes, you know, you have it, but I'm not really that bad. Or who's going to really care about what you have to say about this? And so at first, I, I, like, it took me a minute, I think, to reply. And then finally, because I know of it, later on, we're going to kind of talk about like how I deal with it or how I address yeah. it. And I, and I finally was just like, you know, just email Be Betty and tell her you're excited about it, right? Like that this is a cool project and you wish you could be a part of it. Um, and then our LinkedIn conversation started happening. And I was reflecting on this earlier about how I could see it playing out in our conversation. Oh, yeah. <laughs> where I'm just like, oh, you know, this is so exciting. Like, I really wish I could do this. And you're like, well, do you want to do it? 
And I'm like, right. oh, shucks. I'm not <laughs> sure if what I had. Like, I'm reading, like, this message. Hee hee. It's funny even being asked. I go, well, aw shucks, I'm sure what I have to share isn't as good as what you've already got. And I mm -hmm. think I even said, damn imposter monster to That's you. Right. Because mm -hmm. I'm trying to like humor my way out of feeling inadequate. <laughs> yes. Yes. But you've proven that you're not inadequate. So I'm oh. really glad that you said yes. Shucks, thanks. So, <laughs> so since we're kind of on this topic of, of the imposter monster, which I just, I don't know, you better patent that because I may take it and run with it. <laughs> and, and I will, of course, credit you at the end. I'll be like, you know, imposter monster credited to your job. But, <laughs> um, but anyways, I just, I could see him as a little sock puppet. <laughs> okay. Little button eyes, maybe a, like a porn mustache type of thing. <laughs> nice. Something is, <laughs> maybe everyone's imposter monster looks different. I don't know. Um, but yeah, little puffball for hair. I don't know. Like, I like we it. We need to make it. We need to make an imposter monster. It just kind of like sneaks up over your shoulder. Yeah. Kind of does yeah. that. Like, mm -hmm. are you sure? <laughs> I don't know about that. <laughs> We're gonna do um, something with this. I oh like my it. gosh, it's gonna be really fun. Um, <laughs> but what for you? What does it feel like for you to be in an episode of imposter syndrome? Like, do you have feelings, emotions, uh, physical things that happen? share with us what it kind of feels like. Yeah, it's um the only thing that I can relate it to and this is going to sound extreme, but I say it extremely for the purposes of like I hope someone can kind of understand this. It feels like a depression mm. where it's completely pumping the brakes on something where I generally have an enthusiasm for most things. Um I'm a yippy puppy and I'll get excited <laughs> about things. Um, but then when that imposter monster sneaks up over and starts saying the things that it says, um, I go from 60 to zero mm -hmm. on it. And, you know, I'll give you another example. And this is a recent one. Um, LinkedIn is a kind of a trigger area for me when it comes to imposter monster and imposter syndrome, um, simply because I go there and I look at all the people in our field that are doing amazing things. Mm -hmm. And then I go, well, I, I can't even compete. Like I, I don't, I couldn't even get a toe in. Like there's so much no good noise, right? There's so much good stuff. Like, am I just going to get lost in the clutter? And there was one day that I was going through and, uh, a, a a colleague, a, a contemporary of ours, someone highly respected in our field that I would love to personally meet someday, um, launched a course, an online course on how to build escape room games in Articulate Storyline. And I went, I just spent the last four years of my life doing this. I've studied it. I've built my game. I've done, and I didn't, I didn't build a course, you know, like, uh -huh. I and and it was just one of those things where I, my enthusiasm I felt it viscerally my enthusiasm for my dissertation for the game that I built for all the work that I had done even enjoying escape room games which in previous conversations we've talked about how I'm obsessed obsessed yes <laughs> that is the correct word <laughs> um that I just went from all of that enthusiasm and drive to I don't think I want to do this it was temporary. I've picked mm -hmm. up, you know, the, I've gotten mm -hmm. the wind back in my sails a little bit, but it was that in that moment, it's like just, mm -mm. I can't believe that I didn't do that. You know, yeah. I'm happy. Like, I love that it's out there because it's an important thing. Like it's a good course. And I will say part of that learning for me was that was a really important moment for me to take stock of well, would I have even wanted to build a course, right? right. Yeah. Um, I lost, you know, the wind completely went out of my sails, but then that was a reflection point. I'd listened to the fact that I had these emotions and I went, mm, I wouldn't have wanted to do that anyway. Yep. Even <laughs> So let me do something different. So, mm -hmm. you um, know, and, and just as a side note, and typically I don't offer stuff like this, but just for the, because I totally get, exactly what you're saying this happens to me like I'll be doing something and all of a sudden here comes somebody else talking about the same thing and I'm like but it's we should see it as that means I'm doing the right thing 
Mm. Like it's a confirmation that the content I'm creating is something that's needed because somebody else saw the same need and created something too. And it's okay that there are options. Like mm -hmm. we don't want the entire L&D industry to only come to us about, or only come to you about escape games. Girlfriend, right. you would never sleep. <laughs> there's a lot of people out there so like yeah. there's nothing like like it's it's you know they always say that uh what is it? um something is the most sincere form of flattery but uh, not imitation duplicate. thank you imitation is the most sincere form of flattery sure but it's also proof that what you're doing does matter to other people because somebody else is trying to do something similar that's, and that's legit. It's legit. But we don't think that at first. At first, we're like, <laughs> well, why am I wasting my time? Yep. Right? But it's not really a waste of time. That's just, that's our ego talking to us. And we just have mm -hmm. to be like, shh, Betty, sit down. You know? <laughs> so anyways. No. I did not. Yeah. <laughs> Be quiet. Oh, we are making sock puppets. It's happening. Okay. So if you're listening and you're going to try to steal that idea, just give us a month before you <laughs> bring yours out. Okay. All right. Um, uh, but yeah. So uh, anyways, I just want to stop and add that in. So yeah, because I feel that too a lot. So imposter syndrome, you, you, you used a lot of good feeling words. I love that you said it was sort of like a depression. It's almost like a full stop. Mm -hmm. like you like you were going you were chugging along and all of a sudden you're like the wind is out of your sails the the engine runs out of coal like we could do all the different analogies we want but everything just stops yeah. and it's like definitely quiet because you've lost you have no more ideas <laughs> i know you didn't say that but i'm just going with that's yeah. how it is for me too yeah so absolutely so, okay. So when this happens, how, how do you cope? Do you have techniques that you put into practice? What makes it better? Sure. So uh, I, I, I have things listed down, so I'm going to keep looking down at this because no um, I don't, I would say I'm not strategic in my approach. Um, but there are things that I've learned over time that apply in a lot of different contexts that help me specifically with this. So I think one of the first things is recognizing where it pops up, like what triggers that imposter monster to go <laughs> and pop up over the shoulder. Um, like, where do I feel the most vulnerable? Or, I mean, let's put it out there. Where do I feel the most insecure? Mm. Right. Mm -hmm. And where is that going to come out and tell me I'm not good enough? And I, I hate that this is the case, but like for me, I'm just putting out examples, like LinkedIn is a really great source of that. Sure. I I want to applaud and cheer on all the things that are going on out there. And I love the things that are going on, but I also catch myself going, well, why aren't you doing that? Right. Mm -hmm. So, uh, so recognizing what causes the imposter monster to start talking to you is really important. And going back to that, you know, that root cause thing. Um, and then another technique that I've learned from different um, practices is ask your brain why that's coming up. Um, you know, take a stop because our, our brains, whenever we feel emotion, when we feel fear, when we feel sadness, depression, happiness, our, our brain's protecting or propelling us, right? Like yeah. it's like, I want to save you or I want to thrive you. And um, so when I get into those spaces... I say, okay, I hear you. What are you trying to tell me? Like, brain, come on, unload. And yeah. what I've found is a lot of times specifically around imposter syndrome is I'm just afraid to fail. I have such high performance anxiety. You know, I've always been the A student. I've always been the, I'm the go-getter. Um, you want me to do something? I'm going to hit it out of the park because mm -hmm. there is nothing but success that's allowed, right? Um, so I get afraid to fail, but then, you know, there's all these really great quotes about how many times you have to fail first before you succeed. And I just True. have to kind of remind myself of that. Yeah. Um, another thing I really like is, um, uh, like visualizations, obviously, because I have a little <laughs> imposter monster to help me deal with this. Um, I really like thinking about, okay, here's the situation. And I'll use the course because it's like, this is my job to create training. Um, and I felt it very significantly with this example. Um, well, what do I want to be true? Well, I, I want to be able to share what I've learned about escape room games, digital escape room games, building them in storyline, like I or 
And then is that true? Well, maybe I just want to build and share what I've learned about how experiences help people learn leadership skills. You know, so mm-hmm. it's kind of this like conversation that I'm having with myself and reframing it. Um, and visualizing, well, this happened. This took the wind out of my sails. What would I want to be different? And then being able to kind of pivot from there and say, mm-hmm. well, maybe maybe I don't want to build that course. Maybe that's not where my passion is. Maybe I want to do this other thing. And maybe it can be a compliment to what my peers are doing. Yeah. Um, going back to what you were saying earlier, right? Um, and one thing that's my favorite visualization, I don't know if I've ever shared this with you before. Um, my mom, she's the best ever. And when I was a kid, she used to do this thing where she'd like put her hands forward, like, go ahead, go ahead, honey. Um, and you know, I can think to examples going all the way back to being three years old of like her being behind me saying, come on, go ahead, do this. Um, and so when I get stuck, when I lose the wind of my sails, when I am afraid to ask mm-hmm. for something that I want, if I feel like, oh, maybe I'm not good enough, I kind of picture her doing that. And funny story, um, one day she showed up at my house with this little guy. Have I shown this to you? Uh-uh. Okay. So for copyright purposes, you know, this is Tiny Diamond from the Trolls movie, right? Yeah. Um, <laughs> and uh, it's a McDonald's toy. From a Happy Meal, and it it does the little oh. hand motion, oh, I right? Love it. Yeah, and so I know probably it was originally intent like pump up the music, but this is sits on my desk, and it's kind of like that reminder of my mom going, "Nope, go ahead, you got go this." Ahead. Oh, I love it. That's great. Um, That's a I'm great goofy, technique. you know. I'm goofy. I've got to have fun with it, but that it always makes me smile. And I think when I go from sixty to zero. And yeah. I get into that depressed mode. Humor helps me get out of it. Well, and sure. So, yeah. And then I can start thinking logically again. <laughs> yes. Yes. Well, those are great techniques. Thank what, you. What would you share with someone who's experiencing imposter syndrome like right now? Um, pause and breathe. Um, sometimes it can feel like the end of the world because it can be like, big questions you start Mm -hmm. asking yourself. Mm -hmm. Um, And especially when we get into that emotional part of our headspace, we're not going to think logically about that, right? So being able to take that moment to pause and ask your brain, why are you showing me this? Um, and, And use that opportunity to understand yourself better. I'd say, you know, why is this rearing up? Start asking yourself questions or like, And if you need to, pretend that it's your friend that's experiencing this. What would be the questions you'd ask your friend to help them get out of it? Like, why is this rearing up? Why are you feeling like this? It's okay to feel like this. I think that's probably the big thing too is it's okay to not be okay. So be okay with sitting in it, feeling it, because if you stuff it, it's going to come out bigger later. Oh, it will. (laughs) It absolutely will. Yep. Um, And then – Try to understand what your imposter monster is telling you, right? Like yes. it's lies, but there could be some things that are important to pay attention to that you're hearing. There's a reason mm-hmm. it's popped up. It doesn't mean that you're not good or qualif- not qualified or, you know, it's not that the lies are true, but ask why that's popping up for you. And is there anything that you can do to make your vision you know, whatever it is that the imposter monster is trying to tell you you can't do. Is there anything you can do to make that a reality? So it's kind of like, oops, as I hit the microphone. Sorry. <laughs> <That's okay. laughs> I'm so animated. Um, what can you do to take it from being this emotional stuck thing to bring it up front and now I can tackle it? But you've got to feel it and experience it to shift it up here. I'd say that. Oh, I lost you. I lost you in my headset. Let me check my settings real quick. How about now? I can hear you now. Yes. Okay. So one last question. Um, And that is, why did you want to be part of this imposter syndrome project? Why did you raise your hand? Twice, actually. But that's that's for a different story. Um, I think, well, you know, it's... 
a couple things come to mind with that. Um, Cause I shared up front, like I was hesitant at first to reply to it because, you know, it's that, why, why would anyone care about what I have to say? Mm. Your story is not important. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Your experiences are minimal in comparison to others. Like even mm-hmm. as I've listened to some of your other guests that have talked about this, there's amazing stories and hard stories that mm-hmm. people have experienced. And I'm like, yours doesn't even compare, right? Like, so just the fact that I had those feelings took me through my kind of coping steps and I had to pause and I had to recognize why it was popping up and I had to say, why is my brain doing this? And then once I could get kind of past that, you're afraid that you don't matter, that you don't compare, whatever, I could go, well, I can at least raise my hand and say I'm interested. I'm at no already. Betty could say, I'm sick of you, Rachel. No, (laughs) I'm not going to have you on anything else, right? Um, And that's fine because then I'm still at no. So that's kind of been that like thought process of once I get past that emotional part, ask. And, and so I think that's kind of what made me realize I want to be a part of this because I have to do this on a regular basis. And maybe what I've learned that helps me could help someone else. Mm -hmm. And I went back off imposter monster. I'm just going to share my story and maybe everyone will hate it, but it's out there. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. And um, I'm so glad that you did. I'm so glad we made this happen uh, because I think your story is going to help a lot of people. Um, thank you. So thank you so much for being vulnerable and, and sharing with us and, um, and everyone can watch for that patent pending imposter monster coming out soon. <laughs> <laughs> we can come up with a children's book. <laughs> yes. Oh, that sounds like so much fun. <laughs> Thanks, Rachel. Thanks, Betty. If you like this series and you want to show support, go to buymeacoffee.com forward slash If You Ask Betty to learn more about how you can support this and future If You Ask Betty projects.